I want to officially welcome you to our presentation of Google Apps Secrets for Commercial Real Estate. My name is Michael Griffin and I'm the founder of ClientLook CRM. And here at ClientLook we are avid Google Apps users so you're going to be hearing about a lot of first-hand experience today. Thank you for joining us and I really hope you enjoy the presentation. All right, let's get started by looking at our agenda so you know what to expect. Now today I'm gonna to tell you everything I know about Google Apps from the perspective of a user. And just to set the record straight, we don't sell Google Apps and I have absolutely no financial incentive if you sign up. My insight today is as unbiased as it gets. So first I'll give you an overview of exactly what Google Apps is, but also what it's not. You're here to understand the potential role these business tools can play in your business, but it's equally important to understand what sort of uses you should avoid. Next, we'll discuss how you could create a super cost-effective, basically IT-free virtual office. I'll show you how to access files anywhere, how to simplify your email, and how you could even replace Microsoft Office entirely. Next, we'll talk about how Google Apps integrates with your mobile devices to keep you on top of your schedule and in touch with your clients. Now, here I'll do a, a live demo using my phone or my iPad, and you'll see how we integrate everything here at ClientLook. Now, lastly, I'll give you some takeaway points to help you implement some of the strategies you're going to see. My goal is to give you the insight you need to make a positive impact on your business today. So what is Google Apps? Well, why don't we flip over to the Google Apps website and check it out. Okay, so as it says here, Google Apps is a cloud-based productivity suite that helps you and your team connect and get work done anywhere and on any device. So what does all that mean? Well, Google Apps is a compilation of business tools just like Microsoft Office is. One big difference is that instead of traditionally being installed on your desktop like Office, Google Apps is all online. And they've got something for everyone. And I'll point out the products I think are most important here at the top, including Gmail, which is an email tool like Outlook, a calendar, which is also like uh, Outlook, uh, an online file storage system called Drive that's like Microsoft SkyDrive or Dropbox. And then there's Docs, Sheets, and Slides, which are Google's versions of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. All of these are sold together as a suite of online tools that are accessed primarily through a browser, but they also work on your mobile devices. And in case you haven't noticed, I'm using a Mac. And I chose this to run our presentation today just so I could demonstrate that you don't have to use Windows. Google Apps doesn't care. It doesn't matter where you connect either, so that your entire business can follow you wherever you choose to work. Now, as far as pricing goes, Google Apps is available for $5 per user per month or $50 per user per year. Now this gets each user 25 gigabytes of email storage and 5 gigabytes of online file storage. Now we'll dig into each of these applications here next. So let's take a look at what you get for your $50 a year. Now in the grand scheme of things that turns out to be a real bargain. Now let's talk about using Google Apps to help create a virtual office. Having a virtual office basically means that your core business tools are all online so that you can be productive anywhere. The three main parts of this are company email, file sharing, and document management, which work really well in the Google Apps world. Some of the most successful people I know are totally mobile. If you're not living in the cloud yet, then making that conversion should be at the top of your list if you want to be competitive. We'll start with email and for that I'm going to jump over to Gmail here and don't think your vision is going funny since I've blurred out the messages to uh, to protect the innocent but 
I founded ClientLook as a company using Google Apps for email. It's the only thing we've ever used. And let me give you some insight into how we use it. So let's talk about email access first. Everyone at ClientLook uses a browser to access their email. In my case, I'm using Google Chrome, but it doesn't matter. Personally, I like the idea of a browser because it means I don't have to install Outlook to get email and I can work from any computer. Now, you'll see that this works as you might expect if you click a message on the left, you see the details of that message on the right, pretty, pretty standard stuff. Another, another great thing though is that Google's spam blocker is really good. I get lots of spam, but I never see it since it gets uh, uh, since it gets trapped here in my spam folder. Now, one big point here is that you can still use Outlook with Google Apps. That's right. A, a browser is not required. All you have to do is configure Outlook to connect to your Google Apps account instead of your Exchange server or whatever else you might use. But if you're an Outlook user now, then the good news is that absolutely nothing changes with the way you send and receive emails. And your email recipients will have no idea that anything has changed either. So what about your actual email address? All of our employees have a clientlook.com email address, even though all of our emails are delivered through Google. Now, using Google Apps doesn't mean you have to switch to a Gmail address or, or anything like that. You can convert your existing domain and everyone gets to keep his or her same email address. And again, there's no perceived difference to the outside world at all. Now let's talk about sending email and clear up some potential misconceptions there. Now, sending email works exactly the same way as it did before you implemented Google Apps. And to give you a quick example here, I'm going to flip over to a client look CRM. So this is our online contact management tool that, that lots of you already use, so you'll appreciate this example. I'm here on the record of Robert Taylor, and I want to send Robert an email. He's got an email address, so I click it. Now, even though I'm using a cloud-based CRM and I'm using Google Apps for email, I still get the standard Outlook message pop-up. Now, I wanted to show this to you, um, this Outlook example, simply because I know there are so many of you that still use it, and I wanted to demonstrate that there's minimum impact on your daily workflow. Outlook, though, is obviously not required. I could click on that email address and have another tab appear and have my email composed in Gmail instead. Now, now while we're here, um, I'll show you a cool email linking feature. So to continue with our example, we're gonna send Robert an email, so I enter some details here, and I'm even going to attach a, um, oh, a file. And now normally you just click send and, and out it would go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to BCC my personal client look email address here. What this does is that this will attach the outgoing message back to this contact. So I send the email as I normally would. And if I refresh this page, then we should see the message appear, including the uh, the file attachment down below. Now, this feature, by the way, doesn't require Google Apps since it works with, with any email service or from your mobile device, but it's a good example of how integrated everything can be once you move to the cloud. Now, one of the biggest overall benefits to us is that we don't need to employ any IT resources to manage our corporate email, and, and I mean none. Now, I'm not going to suggest that you won't need help from a consultant to make the switch, but if you're starting fresh like we were, then there's no reason you can't set everything up for yourself. There is no hardware involved here. We don't have an email server since Google hosts everything. Now, some of you may not know what this mean, but means, but there are lots of firms that have these back rooms with legacy email servers that send and receive all your company's email. If you're a company owner, then you know the headache that's involved with this. And if you're someone at a company set up this way, then you're used to the downtime 
that that scenario creates. I'll tell you that I cannot remember a time when our email has been inaccessible. Okay, so now you've seen how you could use Google Apps to run your company email. Let's talk about file sharing next, which is typically another hardware and IT heavy burden for most companies. I'm gonna show you how incredibly easy it is to get rid of your file server and still be in total control of all of your file storage. Now let's talk about online file storage using Google Drive. We're gonna start at this Google Drive page where I download a, a special software utility for my computer. Now I got to this page by searching for download Google Drive or something like that. Now, in my case, I downloaded the Mac utility, which I've already installed, as you can see here at the top of my screen, and uh, this utility is, is free. Now, once you've installed the utility on either Windows or Mac, you'll see a new drive appear in your file manager. Here you'll see Google Drive on, on the left in my screen, and, and here's why this is relevant. This utility, which is totally optional by the way, allows me to keep files on my hard drive like you see here. Now I can add anything I want, uh, and these folders work exactly like any other folders on my computer. These same files and folders, however, may be found in my Google Drive as well. Notice how the folders and the files are all the same back and forth. Now I'll take this one step further though and show you my iPad. So up comes my iPad and I'll jump to the Google Drive app so that you can see that there are indeed the same set of files located here too. And I'll even open up this uh, PDF file here so you can appreciate the fact that you have access to your drive and the files within them no matter where you go. Now the beauty of this is no matter where I contribute files, uh, online in a browser, uh, on my desktop in some local folders, or on my tablet, or even on my phone, the files get synced across every device in a matter of seconds. Now, this means that I can write a document in the office and save it to a folder on my computer. Then this document gets pushed online and synced to my mobile devices. Now, the big benefit to companies is that the folders in which I put these files can be shared. They can be shared with just a handful of people or your entire organization. People can have private folders, they can have private files or, or anything in between. You can even share files and folders with people outside your company. So, so what does all this mean to you? Well, at Client Look, for example, we have three offices and we work with two development teams in other countries. We've created a shared drive that's accessible by everyone. Each user has her, his or her own private drive too. This whole infrastructure works exactly like it used to in companies where the file server was sitting in the next room. The big difference here is that there's no hardware involved, and at least at our end, and, and, and there's no IT involved or required to get this set up. It is super easy. Okay, now you've seen how easy it is to use Google Drive to eliminate your need for a local file server. The last piece of our virtual office puzzle is document management. And by document management, I mean the process of creating word processing documents and spreadsheets, which, which most people do now in Microsoft Office programs like Word and Excel. Now, Google Apps offers simpler yet still viable alternatives to these that allow you to work entirely online. And the place to see all this is in Google Drive. Okay, so here we are in Google Drive to talk about document management. So Google Apps offers a, a host of document management tools, which you can find under the Create menu over here on the left. When I click this button, you can see how I can create documents, presentations, spreadsheets, forms, drawings. If I choose Document as an example, I'll see a new tab appear and an empty document show up on the screen. This is a document. So formatting wise, you can make this very similar looking to something that you might create in Word. 
there's bulleted lists, numbering formats, there's table of contents, but this is not nearly as sophisticated as Word. We use this internally at ClientLook for most of our documents. The simple uh, capability of creating the document this way, giving it a name, test, clicking OK, I'll close the document, and then you'll see it appear here in my list. That's easy, there's no upload, the uh, transfer time is almost instantaneous, and this is available to anybody who has access to the shared folder. You can share this document explicitly by clicking on it, going up to the More menu and choosing Share. I can even push it out to people, email collaborators, collaborators or email this file as an attachment. Now, I can create a spreadsheet in much the same way. If I click Create and choose Spreadsheet, I get a page that looks exactly like a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. The formulas that you might create in here are very similar. You can even uh, uh, upload spreadsheets to Google Apps and it will convert the formulas and the content into the spreadsheet format. But again, just like with Word, this format is not nearly as sophisticated. If you have very data intensive spreadsheets or spreadsheets that link to multiple files, um, Excel is going to be a better option for those. But again, internally here at ClientLook, we use this spreadsheet tool as much as possible. Again, you just give it a name, it saves the file very easily, and it's accessible and share shareable by other people. Now, one thing that's valuable about Google Apps and its file capabilities is that while I'm editing this document, anybody else that has access to it within my company can pull up the same document at the same time. Our changes are reflected in real time back and forth to each other, and I see a list of all of the collaborators up here on the right when there's more than one. It's a really valuable and positive way to, to share content and make it um, accessible in real time to other people. Now, part of your transition into Google Apps is going to be migrating what you already have in local file servers or on your computer's hard drive into this environment. So how do you do that? Well, there's a couple of ways. First is that you could go online and create folders, new folder here. So I click this, I'm just gonna leave the blank name or the default name, new folder, and you'll see that it creates a new folder for me here. I can click on this. Then I can use the upload button to upload individual files, as you'll see here, files into this pre-existing folder. So if I choose files here and um, select some PDF as an example, choose upload it will prompt to ask me if I want to convert the file if it's got an, in, a, in a reciprocal Google Apps format into that format so for example if I'm uploading a Word file it'll ask me if I want to convert that to Google Apps format Google Docs if I'm uploading a, an Office spreadsheet an Excel spreadsheet it will ask me if I want to convert that spreadsheet into Google Apps format my experience with that so far hasn't been great, although a lot of the word processing documents and the spreadsheets that we use have a lot of formatting in them, and the formatting doesn't always translate perfectly. So, um, but experiment with that yourself. If you want to convert, you choose either of these options here, and it will do that. Otherwise, you can simply choose Start Upload, and it will upload the native file to your folder. So you can see the PDF file shown there. Now. You don't have to do uploads on a file-by-file -file basis. If you choose the Upload button here, you can choose entire folders to be uploaded, and it will populate all the contents of those folders into this environment. So remember what's going to happen here. You're going to upload files. You're going to upload folders. You're going to create files in this environment. Those files are going to get pushed not only from this web environment down to your local hard drive if you've got the Google Apps utility, the Google Drive utility installed there locally, but it's also going to push it out to your mobile device, to your tablet, to your phone, provided if you have the local apps installed there. So the basic idea is to give you simple tools and in our experience here at ClientLook is that these tools are becoming increasingly more sophisticated to allow us to use these very powerful Microsoft Office alternatives, Google Docs, word processing, and the spreadsheet capability, 
to populate and create files in this environment without the need for the Office tools. It certainly provides more flexibility when, for example, I'm at home and I'm using a computer that doesn't have the Office tools installed on it, or you're in some remote location and you're, you're on somebody's iPad. Uh, you can log into all of your content here uh, and, and find it online. Now you've already seen how Google Apps can help you create a virtual office with email, file storage, and document management. We also took a look at how accessible your files were from an iPad. One very important consideration though is how Google Apps integrates with your mobile devices with respect to contacts and your calendar. Considering that you spend so much time out of the office, this type of access is critical. And for that, I'm going to start by showing you my iPhone. This is the tool that most of us use, whether it's an iPad, uh, an iPhone, or a Droid, or a, a tablet, or whatever mobile device you choose to use. It's the source when we're out of the office for our contacts and for our calendar information. This tells us where we're supposed to go, who we're supposed to call, and gives us access to those contacts phone numbers, email addresses, and physical addresses. Behind that iPhone screen is Google Calendar. Google Calendar works in much the same way as Outlook does. It lets you schedule events. You can create um, events and invite people. You can create tasks. There's a tab um, also that you see in the background here that I'll click on for contacts. These are Google Contacts. Now here is the big um, disclaimer that I will tell you about Google Apps. We've spent a lot of time talking about the great capabilities of Google Apps and all the things that you can do with it. But I feel it's important to tell you the things that you shouldn't use it for. Now, Google Apps as a contact management system is not adequate for your business. Just as Outlook, I would not consider adequate for um, a, a successful um, business professional. It's a, an address book, much as Google Contacts is, but it's not a way to build relationships. That's what you use a CRM system for, a contact management system as well. But the beauty of the calendar system here and the contact system is the way that it so seamlessly integrates with your phone. So what you want to look for is a way to integrate whatever contact management system that you use with this Google Apps information so that you can constantly stay connected to your mobile device. And there are lots of them, uh, lots of contact management systems that do that. Google offers a wonderful API that allows third-party tools to integrate uh, with them. And, and I'll show you an example from the Client Look world on how this works. So in Client Look CRM, so this is the contact management system that we use internally. And again, lots of you do, and, and you may have already set up this function. But here is the, the spirit of, of the way that all this is supposed to work. In Client Look, you're meant to track all of your contacts and log what you do and schedule appointments. There's a context module. There is an activities module. This information is obviously distinctly separate from the data that you have on your phone, in your phone's address book or in your mobile device's calendar. So in the case of Client Look, as an example, we've devised a way to integrate the Google Apps interface into this system to synchronize data back and forth that you contribute into Client Look or your phone with each other in much the same way that, say, Google Drive works. So in Client Look, uh, when you come to the Sync tab initially, there'll be a big button that asks you to uh, authenticate your Google account. You'll click that button. It will ask you for your Google login credentials. And, and actually, you don't need a Google Apps account for this. You could use Gmail, a free Gmail account for this purpose. But once you've done so, then it presents you with the screen that you see here. And it asks you if you want to sync your contacts. And if you want to sync contacts, which contacts do you want to sync? Your entire database or a subset, a group or something like that. And it gives you some options about what you want to bring back from Google, which for all intents and purposes is your mobile device. 
and it does the same thing with activities. So here's how this works. I'm in client look, I add a new contact and I've chosen to sync my contact. So it sends that contact record down into my mobile devices address book. This isn't a separate app. It's not something extra you have to learn, but it takes advantage of the fact that you have a Google account, either a Google Apps account or even a free Gmail account and connects that directly to your phone. While I'm out in the field, I add somebody's email address. It sends that um, electronically, digitally back up into ClientLook and, and it updates the email address for the appropriate con contact in ClientLook. The same thing holds true with the calendar. All of the calendaring information, all the events that I plug into ClientLook will integrate and write themselves down into my mobile devices, my phone or my tablets, uh, native a, um, a calendar. So the, again, this is not a separate calendaring app. So in my iPad, as an example, I have a calendar. I can schedule an appointment and that synchronizes back up into my cloud-based CRM. So this is just another example of the kind of integration that being in the cloud affords you. Google Apps is a perfect conduit to be able to push information to mobile devices. And one of the reasons we've embraced it is because of the fact that for the foreseeable future, uh, in fact, I can't envision a future where mobile devices won't integrate with Google. So based on the fact that ClientLook integrates with, uh, with Google, we sort of future-proofed our ability to communicate with these mobile devices. And again, there are lots of contact management systems that do this, but I would urge you for whatever you choose, to ensure that you have this capability. And it's, it, in my mind, it's easier and simpler um, than an app that you have to learn or separately install on your mobile device. Find one that can integrate directly into your device's address book and calendaring system so you don't have to relearn any new processes. All right, we've raced through a lot of content in a short amount of time. And to give you a quick recap, we started with a general introduction to Google Apps. We talked about the variety of business tools available and how the service is priced. I showed you ways to leverage these tools to create a virtual office, complete with hassle-free, super reliable email, online file storage that's accessible anywhere, and document management tools to help improve efficiency. Then we talked about the importance of mobile integration and how necessary it is to have complete access to your contacts and calendar from your phone and tablet. And that leads me to the last three takeaway points that I'll share with you today. The first is that none of what I've presented is going to be possible for you until you get online. Many of you have probably heard me say this before, but the desktop is dead. And there's nothing more detrimental to your productivity, to your success, than desktop software that keeps you tied to some specific server or computer. Once you break free of what I call those legacy technology anchors, then you'll be able to achieve a whole new level of efficiency. And you'll only find that efficiency online though. If you're just starting a new company and you're in the market for technology tools, then adopting Google Apps wholeheartedly should be easy. But if you're one of the many in our industry that's in some stage of moving to the cloud, then I'd suggest you prioritize. Pick a tool that's giving you the most pain and aggressively seek an online solution. If your pain is unreliable email, then, then jump on that. If you're out of file space, then convert everything online. Or maybe your CRM system is antiquated. If so, then go find a market leader. Don't look at anything you've seen today as an all or nothing proposition. Do what's right for your company at your own pace. But the worst thing you could do is nothing though. So pick something and do that one thing now. You know, for so long, our industry has been buried in inadequate tools that were complex and cumbersome. One of the biggest suggestions I can make to you as you explore your technology future is to simplify. Spend some time looking at your internal processes, your hardware, your software. Figure out what needs improving 
And one of the best ways to make this happen is to get rid of excess complexity. Complexity is an, is an efficiency killer, and, and the more you can eliminate, the better. We're particularly attuned to this here in the software world where we see people all the time forced to learn how to ignore all the extraneous buttons and links and fields and menus that, that they don't use in some software application. It, it's crazy. Fortunately, the cloud has ushered in a whole new generation of tools that have been born online and are designed really well. Make sure that intuitiveness becomes one of your most important criteria with all of your technology choices. With all that said, I'd like to bring our session to a close. I hope you enjoyed our presentation of Google Apps Secrets for Commercial Real Estate. We want to hear from you, so feel free to provide any feedback by writing to us at webinar at clientlook.com. A lot of the focus today was shaped by input from people just like you. I'm Michael Griffin, and I want to thank you for attending today. I wish you all the best, and good luck in the cloud.